Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the fact that armor is not overrated. I know that sounds kind of like, huh, what is that all about? Well, it's uh, one of the things that, uh, because modern ship design is all about, you know, making something lightweight and capable and wonderful, they basically made something that just can't take a hit anymore. And uh, we're hoping to show that very clearly today. So what we have here is a group of different, three different vessels, and I tried to keep them relatively similar, except for the uh, guy in the end here. Uh, this guy up front, of course, this is the R01. This is the QE, the Queen Elizabeth. This is a big boat. It uh, displaces uh, 63,000 tons here, which is enough. Uh, swinging over here, we have none other than the Iowa. Uh, this is not the OG Iowa. When I think of the OG Iowa, it puts a smile on my face every time because it's like, go, 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 look, go around online and take a look at that. I really wish that this game went all the way back to 1900. Gosh, would that put a smile on my face. Uh, anyway, of course, on the end, we have the Kirov, which is a rocket cruiser. This is a nuclear-powered cruiser. This thing is really, really, really impressive. And it is also a little bit lighter than the other two vessels. And you can see here, it's uh, 24,000 tons, what they're saying, 28 full tons, kind of a thing like that. And what's crazy about this vessel is, uh, if you take a look at the armor, it is completely unarmored, even though it is a battle cruiser. Our Iowa, if you want to take a look at the armor here, this thing is the opposite. It is completely armored. Now that's insane. And of course, if we go to the QE here, uh, if you look at this one, I don't know why I made that big. My apologies. Oh gosh, now I'm going to have to resize it manually. Oh well, medium armor. So let's go launch some things at it and show you just the fact that, like I said, armor is not overrated. All right, so let's go grab our blue side. So first up is going to be a B-52 armed with a Harpoon D. Uh, this is a great weapon. It, remember, the Harpoons were originally designed for the purposes of shooting submarines. Uh, like, if you think about it that way, um, it'll always make sense uh, when you go to take your shots here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab this thing. I'm going to go ahead and do my shift. Actually, we'll be lazy. Shift F1. Hold down the shift key. Drag a box around them. Let go. And now you notice I get all three. Okay, so the Iowa is going to get two, the Kirov is going to get two, and the QE is going to get two. Remember the uh, harpoon weapon? I'm just going to open this up real fast here. <laughs> Full screen for you all. Uh, you can see here the harpoon itself. Let's go take a look. It is a 221 kilogram it. It is a big weapon. Um, it is definitely not a massive weapon, though, and uh, that's going to be important, especially when we get to uh, number two here. So let's go ahead and put ourselves instantly in range here. And our lovely B-52 is starting to deploy his weapons, uh, just like he uh, should be. We're doing a nice job there. One, two, one, two, one, two. And by the way, this is very important. I disabled vision on the other side, so they cannot shoot back. Uh, the reason I did that, obviously, is uh, harpoons are not exactly hard targets for any of the vessels that I just created here. All right, B-52, you've done a lovely job. Please RTB. And uh, we're going to watch the fun now. Now, you're probably sitting here going, let's see here. These are modern anti-ship missiles. Uh, they're going to be slamming into something with no armor, something that's really armored, and something that, of course, um, has moderate arm. It's not bad. And again, I have no like airplanes on the deck or anything like that. And you're sitting here going, oh, well, this is going to be very predictable. Um, obviously, the guy with the armor is going to get caught to catch fire. The guy, bum, 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 bum. the guy without the armor is going to get creamed. Okay, let's take a look. Watch this. All right. So our Kirov, remember, no armor whatsoever. I took both of these harpoons. And uh, you can see here, if we open up the damage control very clearly, um, we're at 25% damage. A quarter of this vessel is basically speckled and damaged and probably has little fire. So you can see we got one of the SANs uh, coming down here. We got one of the radars and uh, everything else is in pretty good shape. Uh, but we've done a quarter of the damage to this vessel with two cheap harpoons. All right, let's go take a look at the QE here. Uh, the QE here is only at 6.4%, so that medium armor really sucked it down. Keep in mind, this is a greater displacement, too. We can see damage-wise, we shattered a camera. Uh, we managed to shoot off the sat cam, and uh, one of our catapults is knocked out, but our boilers are completely out of commission. So uh, this thing is done. Uh, this is actually, that was a mission kill. So the QE is actually out of the fight. Now you're sitting here going, I'm sure the Iowa is just as bad. Let's take a look. The Iowa is at 3.6%. Um, so you basically uh, scratched the paint. And I want to hit up damage control here. You'll see that. Let's see what we damaged. Uh, we managed to get one of the Mark 44s. Oh, oh no, you got it. Um, we scratched the Link 11, and the rest of this vessel is in awesome shape. Now, the interesting thing is, this Kirov is doomed. Uh, you can see here that it is currently flooding. Now, if I were to give this some time, it would probably flood out. As a matter of fact, we'll go ahead and uh, fast forward time a little bit here. Let's see if the flooding gets worse. Uh-oh. And, oh, oh, oh they, that's it. Kirov destroyed. Two harpoons killed the Kirov. Again, this is just one scenario. So again, things will be different in the real world and all that. Could be better, could be worse. I just wanted to show you just how different it is when you're armored versus not armored. All right, let's get something a little more dangerous. Uh, this is a Tupolev 95, probably one of my, 
I don't know. I just love the plane. I love brute force, rough airplanes that don't make sense with huge crews. It's just a personal thing. But uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to be using the AS-16 kickback. Uh, for those of you who've never seen a picture of this thing, it is uh, interesting. It is uh, very interesting. Let me go ahead and open that up so you can try to see a picture of it. You're going to give it to me? You're going to let me see the picture? No, you're going to be disrespectful. I see how it is. The AS-15 is basically a missile. It is not like a, oh, obviously everything we're dealing with missiles today, but um, this thing is like, it's like a little mini V2 is the best way to describe it. And it is an awesome, awesome weapon despite its age. All right, let's do it. Go ahead and select my targets. Uh, you're going to get two. Now, these are very high speed, very lethal weapons here. Uh, they are not, like I said, conventional. Okay, well, let me do it this way. Hey, there we go. Uh, let's take a look here. AS-15. Give me a picture. I want to show you what it looks like. And can you just give me a picture? These things are so cool. Oh, sorry, folks. We're not going to get a picture today. Go look it up online. It'll be fine. So we got everything up. These are AF-16s. My apologies. Not AS-15s. Uh, so we're ready to fire this thing. Uh, let's take a look here what we're dealing with. Uh, this is 150 kilogram. Uh, but the big difference between this one and other ones is the incredible speed it travels at. So this is a lighter warhead, higher speed. Watch what happens this time. All right, whoop, missiles away. Uh, sorry, I zipped through that. But it works perfectly for the purposes of our example here. Now let's see what happened this time. Our Kirov on the end is gone. You can see this guy is aflame. Again, remember the missile uh, rode from above. It did not come from the side. It is on fire. It is just cooked. Like this thing is toast. It's lost almost everything to two weapons. The Iowa, notice how much damage the Iowa took here. Oh, this sucker it got nailed. Systems, perfectly fine. Nothing's wrong. Perfectly fine. No damage, even though it hit the top of the deck. And then lastly, our QE here is on fire and it's flooding. Just remember, if the flooding continues, the fire goes out. I think that's the classic joke there. Uh, the flooding put out the fire. Uh, let's go ahead and speed up time a little bit here. And there goes the Kirov again. I had no doubt in my mind that thing was not going to survive a hit like that just because of it. Now, as you can see, it's very clear that something that has no armor is at a massive disadvantage as far as durability goes. Whereas our Iowa here was obviously built for this stuff. He just... Not that he shrugs the hits off, but he barely feels it. Now, it gets more complicated when you deal with a different kind of weapon. Just remember, if you want to sink something, do it with a torpedo. And you can see us very clearly here. So there's our lovely sea wolf here. And now we're going to creep up on this convoy of vessels that for some reason just cannot see today. And we're going to demonstrate just how damaging these weapons are. All right, here, oop, oop, we're in God's eye mode. Shift F1, hold down Shift, suck my targets. All right, the Iowa, you get one torpedo. Kirov, you get one torpedo. QE, you get one torpedo. So keep in mind, I'm only firing a single torpedo each year. Also, that was the fastest I've ever seen a, a torpedo solution generated. <laughs> that was fabulous. So um, one of the movies I highly recommend is uh, Enemy from Below. And uh, it's uh, absolutely fantastic. But um, one of the cool things there is the sound the torpedo makes. It goes basically is the way to do it. And obviously torpedoes do not make trilling noises, but uh, I think you know what I mean. All right, watch this. So our first person to receive one torpedo, well, actually, let me pause. We should be thorough here. Uh, just so you're aware, uh, this torpedo has a 650 pound, 295. So it's about the same size warhead as the uh, harpoon there. Watch this, bam. Uh, it takes one torpedo hit, bam. It takes one torpedo hit and bam, one torpedo hit. Remember, this is a single torpedo here. All right, so let's go swing over to the other side and see what happened. So uh, apparently we've been attacked by something underwater. So right here we have the Kirov. Uh, the Kirov is uh, about a quarter damaged here. And you can see here we got one of the SAN6s. We got one of the pop groups and everything along those lines. You can see its radio is knocked out. But it is on fire and it is flooding. And as I said, one will put the other out. Our buddy over here, the Iowa on the flip side, doesn't even feel it. It got nailed by a torpedo. And... Oh, oh no, we lost one of our chaff dispensers. Oh, so shame. And then, of course, so when we go on this side, we can see the QE here um, took a bit of a hit. Uh, that hurt. Uh, that actually hurt a little bit here. Again, it's about 10% damage. But you can see here that the torpedo, because of the torpedo belt on a battleship, it barely even felt that. Now, the cool thing, of course, if I fast forward time a little bit, let's hope I don't accidentally fire like six more torpedoes off here. Eh, nope, he was able to put out his fires and his flooding. Like I told you, they cancel each other out.
So that's just to give you an idea of just how critical that armor is. Now I'm sitting here going, okay, this is a good place. And I'm like, nah, we should be thorough. And uh, let's be thorough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these two and get rid of these two. And I'm going to go ahead and get myself uh, something special here uh, just to demonstrate just how disgusting this can get. I'm going to get myself a couple Iowas of my own. You know, the reason I want to do this is only on account of the fact that it kind of demonstrates my point very, very, very clearly here. And again, at this point, you should realize having no armor sucks. Uh, but the other thing you're probably starting to realize is uh, the fact that there's a reason why they don't design things with armor. And that's because they think it's not going to get hit anymore kind of a deal. All right, so I'm going to press F1, click on him, F1, click on him, F1, click on him. Okay, this should be sort of hilarious to watch. Well, actually, we'll go ahead and uh, switch to our little tack view here. So they're going to open up with a little stuff here. <laughs> this is kind of fun to watch. All right, let's go ahead and grab, uh oh did you launch a cruise missile? Oh, you fired a harpoon. Oh, that's just not fair. Pause. Let me fix that. All right, got it. So uh, that way, there's no uh, cheap shots. Oh, here comes the next set of harpoons. Ah, I'll fix that when it happens. But you'll notice here, our Iowas are happily just going kaboom. And yes, that doesn't look anything like an Iowa, as you can see very clearly. Goodbye, harpoons. Goodbye, harpoons. I told you not to fire those again. All right, so we can see these guys are just happily kind of pounding away with their really, 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 really big stuff as they're getting themselves in. Hey, what did I say about launching harpoons? They did intend, by the way, to use these Iowa classes basically as missile carriers. It's actually a really cool story, but check this out. Check this out. You're getting the uh, full experience here, and uh, you can watch all the shells uh, kind of uh, ripping in the Iowa versus Iowa, and you can see, again, this is just the initial blast. We've only been firing for one minute's time so far. One minute, and we'll pause at exactly a minute and evaluate the damage here. And pause. All right, one minute. Let's take a look. So now if we look here, we can see here that our Kirov, um, he's hurting, but he's not sinking or anything like that. But he's lost a lot of the stuff on his deck, which makes sense. Iowa, you could do this all afternoon. Look at that, 1% damage. That's, that's nothing. Again, remember, this thing displaces 65,000 pounds or tons. Coming over to the QE, uh, QE's... It's losing pieces, and it's losing pieces fast. And again, you can see it like this. Now, we can't finish this video, of course, without uh, seeing who goes down in the water first. So let's uh, speed up time. <laughs> this is a very awkward naval battle. <laughs> I'm just going to sit there and get struck by, you know, 300. No, what's the, uh, I forget what's the millimeters on these things. 406 millimeter projectiles here. Now, again, I will send the uh, U.S. taxpayers the digital bill here because uh, this is going to be expensive. Oh, there's one of the big ones. There's one of the big ones. And the Kirov is going to sink first, which makes... Uh, see, I did, forgot the fact that they have little trails underneath here. You can see the higher velocity guns um, when they fire, of course. You can see that it comes through. This is such a cool visual. <laughs> it's just weird looking, kind of like one of those kind of a things. So my points are definitely... Uh, he's going to go down first. He's already flooding and starting to sink and all that other stuff. Let's see how he's doing. Again, it's only been four minutes of shelling, and he is out of the fight. Bye-bye. Uh, QE is probably going to be up next here. It's at 13, 15%. Oh, we just lost something really bad. Uh, let's say something additional damage. Iowa, by the way, is actually the one who is losing all the pieces, but the actual frame of the ship has not been damaged. It's still watertight. It just doesn't have anything on the deck anymore. And uh, that just gives you an idea of these durability. So I'll speed up time a little bit more here. Oh my goodness, this thing's just not going... It's going to run out of pieces before it actually sinks. Uh, meanwhile, the QE here is uh, also basically out of pieces here. Oh, we lost all the rudder there. But incredibly, they're still going. And again, remember, the Kirov was uh, destroyed in under a minute and a half here. This is all gunfire-based. Golly, look at that. <laughs> this thing's just getting pounded. Oh my goodness. Okay, I did not expect them to survive this long. By the way, you notice the eye was only at 10% damage. Meanwhile, the QE here is at uh, 42, and I think it's run out of stuff that I can break on it, <laughs> basically. Uh, the bridge in CIC is still going. I'm actually going to have to accelerate time harder here. There we go, finally. And you can see it was almost uh, 14 minutes of constant bombardment, and this thing's like, all right, I quit. Meanwhile, the eye was like, bring it on, bro. <laughs> It just doesn't want to go down. <laughs> nope, that did it. It's flooding now, and now it's over. You know, an hour and a half of shelling later. So hopefully this kind of answers that question as far as, uh, you know, what role does armor have in kind of a contemporary engagement? And I think it's very clear that armor really improves survivability. If you combine that with a little bit of things like, you know, a sea whiz or air defense missiles, and you've got a really tough-to-kill platform. Enjoy.